Hello everyone and welcome to the video on for section 9.9 .9 with parametric equations and graphs. Now this is the, the where we're going to be looking at two different graphing systems. Um, we haven't done anything from chapter 9 where this is the only section we're going to do this year with it, uh, but it is looking at uh, what are called parametric curves and um, we'll talk in class about how you can work with these on your calculator. But to start out with here, our skill objectives are one, going to be to graph parametric equations, number two, convert from parametric equations to rectangular equations, and number three, convert from rect rectangular equations to parametric equations. Remember, rectangular equations are the ones that we're used to working with, the x, y ones. Parametric, are, we're going to be defining those a little bit. We've had some experience with parametric equations as well. Back when we were doing vectors, we did get parametric equations for lines, and we talked about some of the unique uh, characteristics of these parametric equations. Uh, our conceptual objectives for this one are, one, understand that the results of increasing values of the parameter reveal an orientation of the curve or a direction of motion along it. We talked about that when we were de dealing with the parametric equations for lines from vectors. That it gave you, one of the things that they gave you is a sense of direction in, in which way things were going to be going. And uh, number two is that we can use time as a parameter in parametric equations. So we can look at that T. A lot of times we use it very, the letter T as our parameter. T, we can think of that as time. So we can say after one second, after two seconds, after three seconds, if that's our unit of time, or maybe our unit is minutes. And regardless, we can see the motion that is taking place, the change in position as the time increases. Before we get going on this, let's look at a definition of parametric equations. Uh, we're going to let x equals some function f of t, and y is going to be a function g of t. And they're defined for, for t on some interval. Okay, That interval will be expressed to you in some way. And then that, the set of points x, y, which will be f of t comma g of t, represent a plane curve. The equations x, of, x equals f of t and y equals f of t are called the parametric equations of the curve, and the variable t is called the parameter. That's why we call it parametric equations. Remember here that this does represent, these points that we generate are going to be uh, the, the plane curve. What happens is the x-coordinate is whatever f of t is, the y-coordinate is whatever g of t is. Let's take a look at an example in terms of graphing here. In this case, what we have is our per parametric equations for our curve are x equals uh, t plus 1 and y is t squared minus 1. And we're going to be doing t, this symbol right there, t is an element of. t is an element of this interval from negative 2 to 2. And so in this case, I set up, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a table of values. Now, don't ignore the colored uh, uh, portion there. and You'll see my table. My first column is going to be the t's, and I just had t starting since we were going from negative 2 to 2. I just went up by 1's in there. My next column is x equals t plus 1, then y equals t squared minus 1, so that what will come out of this is the x-coordinate of our point. What comes out of here will be the y-coordinate, and then over here I actually just labeled, made the points x, y. So in the first case, what happens? I have t equals negative 2. So I'm going to put, I know x equals t plus 1, so I'm going to say x equals, I'll replace the t with negative 2. So I get x equals negative 2 plus 1, and negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. So the x-coordinate of my point is going to be negative 1. y is t squared minus 1, so y in this case is going to be negative 2 squared minus 1, well, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 1 gives me 3. So I get the point negative 1, 3. And so I can go to that, negative 1, 3, and I put a dot right there. So there's the point negative 1, 3. Now we go to the next value. I have negative 1 in for t. So when I put negative 1 in for t, x is going to be negative 1 plus 1, which will be 0. y will equal negative 1 squared minus 1. Well, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. So we do get the point right on the origin there. The next one we have is when I use uh, 0. When I put z t is 0, I get the point, I get 1, x is going to be 1 y is 0 squared minus 1, so that's going to be negative 1. So I get the point 1, negative 1, which is this point right there.
And the next one, you can, as you can see, I've just filled in these values. When, x, when t is 1, I'll get x will be 2. y is going to be 0. So I'm going to get, I'll plot the point to 0, which is here. And then I do, when x is 2, uh, I put 2, or sorry, when t is 2, I put 2 in for t, and I'll get 3, 3. So I get the point 3, 3. And I'm going to get this point right up there. And now that's the point 3, 3. Now what happened on this? As t, we started with t as negative 2. So right here, this is where, where we are when t equals negative 2. When t equals negative 1, we're here. When t is 0, we're down here. t is 1 and t is 2. So when I go and connect these dots with my curve, I will get a direction, and it's going in this direction. So you'll see we put the little arrows on there to indicate that that is the orientation or the motion along that curve. So our plane curve is this parabola here, and we go, we are starting from here and we're moving along the parabola like this until we get to this point right there. Now one of the things that happens here when we graph these, when we graph these things by hand, we can see that motion. You are going to have to be aware of that with your calculator because your calculator will not necessarily show you the motion, the direction of motion that they can, as it works its way through. It will give you the curve, and, but you're going to have to go and uh, use the arrow keys to see that, and we'll demonstrate that in class. But every time you graph, whenever you go through and sketch the graph of a parametric equation, you need to have the path and you also need to indicate the motion, the direction of travel. Now what we're going to look at is what, how we go through going from param uh, parametric equations to rectangular equations. The first thing you're going to do, one option that you have, not necessarily the first one, but the first option that we have is one, we're going to solve the equation for the, uh, for the parameters. In other words, we're going to solve it for t. A lot of times we'll use t, and we'll plug that result into the other equation. So we just have to decide which equation we want to use. The other thing we'll, that will help us out at some times, because the information we have is going to be a little bit more difficult to solve necessarily for that parameter, is we're going to try to identify another relationship that we can use to exploit, well, that we can exploit that will help us tie uh, the x and y together. Often, this is going to be some sort of identity. And you're going to see, for example, a lot of what comes into play a lot of times are the Pythagorean identities that we did in chapter um, 4, 5, and 6. So let's take a look here at the first one. Now, you'll recognize this particular problem for the, what we were just graphing. Uh, now, what happens on this thing, we want to go through, and we're going to solve one of these, and you'll just decide which one is going to be easiest to solve for the parameter. In this case, my easiest one to solve for the parameter is the x equals t plus 1. So I'll say, since x equals t plus 1, if I solve that for t, I just subtract 1, I get that t equals x minus 1. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in for the t. And so when I do that, I'm going to have y equals x minus 1, that quantity squared, minus 1. And there is our rectangular equation. Now you could go through and multiply this out and combine the like terms, but really this is actually a, a pretty good one we had because remember we were dealing with a par parabola, and you could recognize this as being a parabola where the vertex is at 1, negative 1. Let's take a look at the next one over here. Now, in this case, we have x equals 5 cosine t and y equals sine of t over 2. And what we're going to do on this, what, uh, we're going to use the Pythagorean identity. We have a, uh, one of our identities that you might remember was that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve each of these. Uh, we're going to solve this one for cosine t and this one for sine of t. So if I take a look at the first one, I have x equals 5 cosine t. So solving for cosine t, I get that cosine of t is x over 5. 
My other one I have in this case um, is y equals sine of t over 2. So solving for sine of t, I get sine of t equals 2y. Well, now what I can do, remember, our identity is cosine squared plus sine squared. Well, in this problem, then, if I square both sides, I can say cosine squared t is equal to x squared over 25. And I can say sine squared t is 4y squared. And so plugging that into the identity, I get that, uh, in this case, I will get um, x squared over 25 plus 4y squared equals 1. And there would be our rectangular equation for uh, this set of parametric equations that we have right there. Now let's look at going the other direction. Really the other direction, you have some freedom. Okay, um, in terms of going through when I have something that is really more of an explicit equation, by explicit equation, I have so like y equals, and it's just things with x over there. What we have over here would be what's called an implicit equation, uh, because it's not solved directly for y. And there, you know, in, in this case right there, we'd have an issue with solving it for y, because we couldn't say we would have y equals plus or minus something. So when we have more of an explicit relationship, we actually have a lot of freedom. Uh, option one, you know, I could just, I want to find parametric equations for this, and I'm, so I'm going to let x equal t, and then y equals t squared minus 3t. There we go. There is one parametric set of parametric equations. Option two, option two is that I let x equal something other than t. Um, and often this is going to be the case when they go through and tell you, maybe you're using time, and they say, uh, you know, we're going to start um, at whatever t minus 2. So they say x equal, we'll set x equal to t minus 2. And so we just, we replace the x's in our problem with t minus 2. So I have t minus 2 squared minus 3 times t minus 2. I can multiply that out. I'll get t squared minus 4t plus 4 minus 3t plus 6. And combining the like terms, I get y equals t squared minus 7t plus 10. So our parametric equations in this case are x equals t minus 2, y equals t squared minus 7t plus 10. All that's going to do is change when we're, what, at what time we're at a specific point. Now when we have an implicit relationship, when we have an implicit relationship like we do have up here, we're often going to want to look for different identities we can use. And one of the things, again, like we talked about, like I mentioned before, um, parametric identities uh, come into play quite a bit on the, or not parametric, the uh, trig identities, and the Pythagorean identities. And you might remember there was one that dealt with where we had, uh, where you could rewrite it as the difference of two trig function squares. And that was that we could say that secant squared t minus tangent squared t is equal to 1. So what I'm going to want to do on this is I'm going to want to go and take our equation that we have, uh, in this case the x squared minus y squared equals 9, and we want to get it into a form similar to this. In other words, I want to get it equal to 1. And the way I do that is I'm just going to divide everything by 1. And so when I do that, I'm going to have x squared over 9 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. Okay. And now, in this case, I can go and say that uh, x squared over 9, that's the same thing as x over 3, that thing squared, minus y squared over 9 is y over 3, that thing squared equals 1. And so to get my parametric equations now, I look at the two things being squared. So in this case, the first one, I'll have x over 3, and I have a secant, secant of t. And so I can say, in this case, that um, x over 3 is equal to the secant of t. And so solving that for x, I get x equals 3 secant t. 
In the next one, I can say that y over 3 is equal to tangent of t. So y equals 3 tangent t. And so my parametric equations in this one would be those two right there. This now does conclude the video on uh, working with parametric equations. Um, and so with that, we will look at, we'll talk a little bit more about these in class, plus look at uh, how the calculator comes into play with these. So with that, I hope things are going well, and I will see you at our next class.